welcome everybody to episode 40 of the Wet Shavers Roundtable. Uh, I am your temporary host today. <laughs> uh, the Thank God for that. Thank yeah, God it's only temporary. <laughs> Thank goodness it's only temporary. Uh, we all know that we don't want this to be a permanent thing. So uh, welcome everybody to our show today. And uh, you might be a little bit uh, misled by our title today, as David was saying just a little bit before we started recording. We were going to have Gail from uh, from Edwin Jagger join us for our show today, but uh, she had some uh, personal things come up where she uh, an opportunity she just could not step away from, and so um, we totally understand, and that kind of stuff happens. So, and uh, just to uh, to put anything at ease, slide. No, I'm not going to leave early today. <laughs> um, His so, wife already signed the permission slip for the whole yeah, trip. Yeah, yeah, we're good. So uh, instead today we've, uh, in preparation for our Big Shave West, which is in two weeks, by the way, everybody, woohoo! Uh, we have invited Matt Pisarsik and his assistant, uh, I'm forgetting Marissa. her name. Marissa. Marissa. <laughs> I knew it started yeah. with an M. I just wouldn't, didn't want to get it wrong. So Marissa has uh, also been uh, working with Matt for a while, actually, for producing some videos. So we're going to talk about uh, some of the work that they're getting ready to do for Big Shave West. And we also have an open seat. So maybe we'll bring some some guests in and uh, just have some fun talking about shaving. So welcome, everybody. All, all, I, all I know is I am demanding a speaking role in this year's uh, Big Shave West video. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Bro- last year it was your wife. Yep, real serious. Yeah, yeah, that, time. yeah, that was that See, was the my thing wife. Is, is about speaking rules is we can only give them to interesting people that have oh, lots of interesting yeah. things to say. Your wife oh. won last year, so we'll see what you can do this year. <laughs> she comes, she comes on my show and she's insulting me. <laughs> Jesus, no respect, no respect, no respect whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> That's Nothing, funny. babe. You're, you're getting all the love and attention over here. Well, um, (laughs) I I actually wanted to take a quick opportunity to do kind of a formal uh, introduction with Marissa. Um, Please. um, I know that, uh, you know, you mentioned that she's an assistant. Um, That is a complete understatement. Um, We hired Marissa Neal on in 2014. And uh, she has filled many roles at the shop. She's helped with everything from customer service to shipping to ordering um, inventory, you know, from our distributors. She's done videos. Uh, she's helped with staff training. So she's a, been a very big part of um, the growth that you've seen with Razor and Port in the last couple of years. And uh, she actually has a degree in film. And um, so when she does our videos, we always kind of try to take a really kind of uh, professional approach to them. And uh, we're real lucky to have her talent and uh, looking forward to making this video for this uh, Pasadena show. Awesome. Now, if I'm not nice. mistaken, I recall seeing her starring in one, one well, or two thank of your you videos. All that. Yeah, that was good. Uh, yeah, Mar- Marissa has really taken on um, a lot of passion with female shaving education. Uh, not only can she help uh, girls learn how to use a straight razor or safety razor. She coaches guys in our lobby all the time. Really? And a lot, yeah, we'll have guys that actually call on the phone and say, can I actually talk to you about this? And she always says, you know, I got, I have a lot of surface area to shave with as well. So <laughs> <laughs> more than a lot of guys. So in fact, more yeah. than most guys, I would say. Do you want to tell them about uh, some of your shaving setup? As a female shaver? Um, I mean, sure. I don't know how many females are actually on, so it might not be super. I think it's impressive that you use a straight razor on your legs. I think it's, I mean, it's it's a labor of love. I actually remember the moment that I was like, you know, Matt, I can't answer any of these questions that we're getting in the email. How do I, does anybody shave their, and you said, I don't know. I don't know if anybody shaves their legs with a straight razor. So I said, <laughs> okay, well, let's figure it out. And I remember he actually, he was like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> So he puts his leg up on my desk and he's like, well, maybe, you know, we're just like, how do we do this? We're just sitting there in the lobby, just like weirdos. Are you trying to shave our legs? And just over the course of a couple months and lots of, um, all um, blocks, I figured it out and, you know, and it's really not that hard. I mean, it's, it's easier and it's a quick learning thing. You learn very quickly because you have lots and lots of surface area. Mm-hmm. Guys have one chin, 
you screw it up. You got to wait a couple of weeks to try again. I got two knees. So <laughs> this diamond thing, it goes really, really quick. That's a great point. <laughs> and, would, uh, and would you say that... Know, um, some guys have double chins, you know. Well, that is true. <laughs> Anyway, sorry, David, you were saying something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you actually, when you're shaving your legs, do you actually shave like while you're in the shower or is it a totally different event when you actually need to shave your legs? I feel like with just with guys or exactly like guys, I can't, this is like we're burning my ear. Okay. Well, the same with guys. Um, I do it sometimes in the shower. Sometimes I'll do it on just on the edge. If I'm trying to take some time and really enjoy the experience, I'll lather up my legs and I'll do it outside of the shower. I prefer to do it inside the shower because I'm lazy and also because it just keeps everything wet. Uh, lathers tends to dry, so you have to kind of do it in, in passes and, and kind of columns rather than anything else. Exactly. But the problem with the shower is that you have to make sure to try and keep a hand dry I had one week where I ended up having two little tiny nicks on my calves, both of them in the same exact place. Cause I was like, and slide, dang it. Like, so you, you figure it out. I figured out that the shower is best. Hmm. Keep your hand dry though, if you can. I know what you mean though, with, with having to keep your, your lather wet. Cause sometimes when I'm shaving my head, exactly. if I wait too long, then it, the lather will dry up and it starts to stick. Yep. Right. Difficult to use. Oh, that reminds me, Scott, have you ever seen um, Uncle W's videos? Yeah. Oh yeah. Eric yeah, This is really good. Yeah, for 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 yeah, for head shaving. Yeah. He does his in quadrants. And I remember one video uh early on when I started watching the dudes actually did a little breakdown. Uh -huh. He actually does it in four quadrants and it was pretty cool. Yeah. And it will help with that whole uh drying out stuff. Right. Well, awesome. Well, so uh you guys Matt and Marissa, you guys made a video last year, which uh I'll see if I can look it up here and put it a link in, in the in the sidebar. Uh, for people to watch later, but um, so you made a video for last year's Big Shave West, which is a great summary of everything that uh, that went down. What do you guys have planned for this year, or is there anything planned for this year? Um, we had a quick talk with both uh, Damon and Doug um, uh, to kind of get their impressions and their feedback, and you know, last year's video kind of was more of. Um, the flavor of not only the show, but also if you are new to wet shaving, we wanted the video to be an access point that someone could say, hey, this sounds really interesting. So we had some great uh, clips of Khan and um, the gentleman from Castle Forbes uh, uh, English. Andrew French. A Andrew French, thank you. Uh, we had them kind of really speaking very passionately about how fun it is to get into wet shaving. So it was more of a promo, not only just for the show, but also, also for... Also shavers, too, though. People yeah. that just came to the event. Heber Cotton. Heber Cotton. Uh, yeah. yeah. Some other guys. But so this year, we're going to take a little bit different approach. In fact, that's one reason why we wanted to make sure we were on the show today. Uh, we have an interesting idea about some crowdsourcing. Well, it wasn't our idea. Uh, Douglas mentioned Douglas it. Was, yeah, he's the... <laughs> Douglas is a great... Uh, he's very creative. He's a great brainchild for a lot of uh, creative ideas. And, and he mentioned, he said, you know, what if we got some guys to actually shoot videos live at the uh, at the event and submit them to like a Dropbox account and we could maybe pull from some of that, like crowdsource some of the uh, footage to see from, you know, what what the average person see, not just kind of the glossed over, you know, high production value video, but some of the, you know, in the crowd kind of video. So uh, but I'll let Marissa talk a little bit more about kind of our, our outline of what we want to achieve with this year's video. Well, I think this year is a lot different than last year. Last year, we no one really had anything to compare this to, and we didn't know what to expect, what the turnout was going to be, what the vibe was going to be, a mix of shavers and wholesalers and retail. You know, it was it was very, very unique. And now we know exactly what's going to happen. It's going to be even bigger than last year. It's going right. to be crazier than last year. It's going to be way more people, demonstrations. Um, but now we have all of our eggs in a row. We're going to be bringing in multiple shooters. And I love the idea of having people's iPhones out and getting ready to go to the show and saying, what are your what are your expectations for the show? And while you're there, clips of you know the demonstrations you're getting to see. And then afterwards, what were your takeaways? What were the things that, you know, it's a conference, yes, but it's so much more than that in a lot of different ways. And I want to know exactly how it's affected people. Yeah, if they learned anything or what it was like to meet someone that maybe they only knew online, um, but now could really meet in person. I think it's a really interesting phenomenon. 
um, you know, before I was into the shaving thing, I used to be into online gaming. And I had a couple meetups with the uh, guys from my, you know, clan or whatever uh, in Las Vegas. <laughs> did you play and World of Warcraft? <laughs> no, I did not play World of Warcraft. I played a, a World War II simulation game called Battlefield 1942. I'm, I'm familiar with that because I, I was a big fan of World of Warcraft, but I, I yeah. wasn't familiar with Battlefield. But, you know, just like when you meet up with the guys, you have this almost instant friendship that, you know, you've only had a digital relationship and then you meet them in three dimensions, you know, real world. And all of a sudden you're like, it just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that you only knew them, you know, through a forum or chat room or Facebook group. Um, so I think that's another really cool aspect is the, the connection that's going to happen. And we want to capture some of that and kind of tell that story that the wet shaving thing is just another great way to meet awesome people and to enjoy a hobby. You know, right. Well, you know, it, it was weird with this past week. So I was in um, I was in Newark and Warwick this past week on business and uh, got to meet up with Chris Cullen in New York. But then it which was awesome. But then in Warwick, I met up with uh, I know I'm uh oh, I don't know if Sly is referring to me or to somebody else saying that they're a geek. But um so I got to meet I think, up with. I, I think he's referring to those of us that did online gaming. Online gaming, okay. Shut up, Sly, yeah. you did. <laughs> Matt for gaming, okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, we all have our things. We're talking about shaving here. We're all geeks. Um, <laughs> but I got to meet up with uh, Jason Rudman and uh, Tom Morin and uh, Justin Duby, or Josh Josh Duby, excuse me, in uh, in Warwick, and we sat around in a restaurant and, and just talked about shaving for like three hours. And yeah. it's, it's kind of, it's really an odd thing to get together and talk about, but when you have a lot of people that can get together and they have so much fun, just enjoying each other's company because they have common interests. It's a really cool thing that I think our world should do more of. Oh yeah. But. It's a lot of fun. Um, you know, I've had another opportunity, uh, to go out to Ohio for some of the razor collectors meetings. They're mm -hmm. actually in Cincinnati and talk about a different uh, dichotomy, you know, use, usually when we're hanging out with shavers at a meetup at a restaurant, a bar, we're used to talking about lathering and cream and aftershaves and blades. When you meet up with some of these collector guys, they're interested in, uh, you know, some obscure patent date on a razor. Or do you have the shipper box for this? And what do you think they were thinking when they when they went to this change in 1926? You know, uh -huh. so it's a completely different thing, but it's still that commodity that you have. Um and so, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun getting together with uh, with anyone in a, in a common hobby and, and, you know, swapping swapping stories, you know, talking shop. Yep. I have a question over here I wanted to quickly uh, uh, address from James Salazar, if that's okay. Yeah, go for it. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, cool. Um, it's m and m, m, &M <laughs> Matt and Marissa. It says, uh, what is your biggest weekly challenge with restoration? Um, you know, restoration is probably a good third, maybe half of our business. Uh, both for internal uh, inventory, but also customer inventory. And it's, I think the biggest challenge is just meeting expectations. Um, you know, customers send stuff in and there's a lot of emotional attachment with it. It's not like a Mercur razor. You take brand new out of a box and it's just like, okay, great. This is our razor. You know, I'm going to shave with it. Uh -huh. When you're dealing with someone's grandpa's razor or someone's father, whatever, and, you know, people want it to look the best and we try to do the best we can but sometimes there's just such a high expectation level. So always trying to balance expectations. It's not like we're just, you know, repairing someone's car or something that's really just material. A lot of times uh, someone's razor is the only real thing that they have from their relative that they can use. You can't use, you know, your, your grandfather's glasses or, you know, uh, you can't use his, you know, clothes maybe or tie. Sometimes it's too small or whatever. But like a razor is something that you really can use. So people have a lot of emotional attachment. Yeah. That what I, I'd say is the biggest thing is for my. I would say that definitely. I would agree, and I would add another asterisk to that: is not only their emotional connection, it's ours to them, like our commitment and right. saying, "Wow, you sent it to us. Like how how lucky are we to get yeah. to see such a special part of your." your family's history yeah. and to be able to restore that and to not only have their expectations, but our own. Right. Like we're all collectors. We're all shavers. We know what looks good and we know what we would want to have the the quality level of something that's right. been restored. How do we push it? How do we add more services and how do we do it better? How do we do it faster and yeah. cheaper? You know, it's... better, faster, stronger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> A little daft punk. 
Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> That's where my mind was going with that too. <laughs> that <is faster. laughs> Harder, um, better, faster, stronger. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I I just had a question that occurred to me as sure. uh, as you were talking about that. Now, so you guys are planning on bringing some equipment to actually do some, uh, not the full revamp or the replating service necessarily, but some tune-ups and whatnot on, on yeah, razors, right? Yeah, we're going to bring out, um, we're really lucky to have uh, a couple real skilled, talented craftsmen in our shop. Um, one gentleman, Eric Engel, he was there last year. Uh, he'll be coming out with some of his sharpening stones. Eric does all of our straight razor work, so he'll be doing some uh, demonstrations on uh, honing techniques, and um, I'm sure he'd be willing to hone a razor if someone brought one by, a straight yeah. razor. I'll also be bringing out my uh, one of my technicians, uh, Thaddeus Wells, and he's been with the company since we were in my garage, and uh, he does a lot of our polishing and a lot of our uh, repairs, a lot of broken things, brazing, soldering, um, He'll actually be doing some of the tune-ups. Yeah, we'll have a, a small machine there that we use, kind of like a jewelry polishing machine that we use for tune-ups where you're not trying to put new metal on uh, a razor. You're just trying to make the metal that's there clean and bright and shiny and, and uh, also do any kind of mechanical adjustments. If you have doors that don't open or adjusters that don't click, stuff like that we can address in our tune-up service. So, yeah, we'll be doing that as well. Looking forward to kind of showing some people uh, a little more behind the scenes of what we do. Yeah. Man, it almost seems with all the stuff going on in this big shave west, man, it almost seems like it could even be appropriate to have it over two days, man. Because I know, right? There's, there's a lot of people gonna be at this one, especially a lot of vendors, and for everybody to get like a appropriate amount of time to be able to talk to everybody, because mm -hmm. all of us that are there as vendors have to, we not that we have to, but we get the opportunity you to want talk to, to so many people, and yeah, man, you just you can't get to everybody. So damn. Well, maybe so maybe. We'll... We oh, sorry. Go ahead. That's something we got to mention to Damon sometime, uh, may possibly next year, to make it a two-day event because that right. will probably be awesome. Well, yeah, right. as you guys are sitting here talking about it, I'm, I'm thinking, man, am I going to have to – not even as a vendor or, a, or an artisan, I'm sitting here thinking, am I going to have time to go and actually have the conversations that I want to have with people while I'm there? You're, you're yeah, not, not. You're not. I, well, I was there last year, and I got to say maybe like five words to, to Matt uh, before everything started getting chaotic. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of introduced myself, but I didn't even get a good conversation with Madden. And um, yeah, you you really don't. And yeah. there's going to be more vendors, and it seems like a bigger crowd this year. And yeah, you don't get it all in. Well, maybe we need to tell Damon or put forth a, an idea of having um, a dinner Friday night or a dinner or a meet up at a bar or restaurant afterwards Saturday night to kind of extend that and more of the social aspect. Uh, yeah. Maybe that would be a good idea. That sounds like so much fun. <laughs> that would be so I mean, we're, we're over here drinking some beers <laughs> on the back porch in my house here. So, you know. Well, it's 11 to 6 on. Oh, the Dos Equis. Right? Yeah. Hey, Aquafina. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, something that we do on the, on the normal on the normal meetups, we, we do meet up afterwards. Since the Big mm -hmm. Shave West was the very first thing of its kind last year, we all kind of got disoriented towards the end and kind of everybody went their own separate ways. Um, but yeah, that's yeah. actually usually like the plan that after the event, um, we go well, out to one of the local restaurants. Let's let's have yeah. Damon or Doug or someone else who's experienced with the downtown Pasadena area pick a place that uh, is not only walkable, yeah. but uh, can accept as many people as we're going to bring to the table. <laughs> well, I want to party all night, man. It was that English pub that we yeah, went we, last we, time. I think we went to a pub. Yeah, an English pub. We went there for breakfast for a good old English breakfast, and then we ended our night there, too. <laughs> and, yeah, Damon walked over. and I think Douglas and some other guys were at a Chinese food restaurant or somewhere else. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, we, we, we should do that because, I mean, it's it, – those that are, are just want to come for the event and, and go home, great. They can go home. Right. But those of us that are coming into town or, or, like, a bunch of us that are traveling there as a destination – then it might be a, a good opportunity for us to just keep the party going into the night. Right. You know? um, I, I wanted to answer another question I saw on the sidebar. I want to make sure those don't go unanswered. Uh, somebody asked if we are an, an importer of Edwin Jagger. Oh, somebody already yeah. answered that. Oh, was that answered? Yeah. Okay. I'm like reading the, this. That's fine. We're, it's, we're out on a bright patio and it's hard to see the screen. But uh, yeah, we do sell Edwin Jagger. Uh, we have a real close connection with Gail. Gail is a personal friend. I've known her for five years. Uh, maybe if she's listening out there, Gail, 
Hey, what's up? No, he said wave at him. And oh, <laughs> wave. Okay, hi. I don't know. You like waving. Huh? It's Dr. Mike. Oh, okay. He's friendly. But um, yeah, I've actually another another quick story for everyone. Um, I had a really unique opportunity to actually uh, work directly for Edwin Jagger at a um, Las Vegas convention uh, in the men's kind of fashion arena. And I actually got to meet Neil Jagger himself. He flew in from uh, wow. Sheffield and uh, had dinner with him two nights in a row. Uh, Neil's a great guy. Just to give everyone kind of some trivia tidbits, he is actually a trained silversmith. And uh, he developed his very first uh, completely sterling silver double-edged razor in 1989, which is why everything's referred to as a DE-89. And um, he was actually making chandeliers and candelabras. And so he was very familiar with silversmithing. Great guy. The guy is like, he's like Ian McGregor, the guy who plays Gandalf. Is that Ian, Ian, <laughs> Ian McKellen? Sorry, Sir, Ian McKellen. Ian McKellen. He Sir reminds McKellen. me so much of yes, yeah, Sir Ian McKellen. He's just like Ewan the, McGregor is Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah, yeah. So you're getting your <laughs> yeah, but you're getting your fans mixed up. <laughs> Neil Neil is the most just laid back guy, and Edwin is actually his grandfather. So that's where the name Edwin comes oh. from. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the geek I, I, is strong with this. I, I want a, I want a sterling silver d- double edge razor. How can I right? get my hand I know, right? I want that. <laughs> right? Yeah. You're kidding. So yeah, and they're they're great products. Cool. I, I've I've enjoyed using Evan Jagger for a long time. Um, they, I think they make great quality uh, products. We carry a lot of their razors. We don't carry some of their shaving cream. It's not because they're not good. Just you know, we carry some other brands. But the razors are awesome, and uh, couldn't say enough good stuff about the brand. Yeah, I recently for the That's first cool. time used the Edwin Jagger DE eighty nine, and it's an awesome razor. You know, it's, it's a great a, razor. You know, everyone imitates it. Yeah, yeah, and it's one of those things that everybody says the Mercur. Uh, what is it? The HD, the thirty four. The thirty four HD. And I'm, I'm yeah. sure it's a great razor, but just visually, it's very bland to say the least. It's just it's a, it, it's it's as unattractive as I guess a double edged razor can be. There's really nothing special about it. So just the little, yeah. the little added emphasis bit, that Edwin Jagger puts on their razors, mm-hmm. it really looks like a piece that you could keep for the rest of your life, and it, 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 it'll look just as beautiful yeah. the day you got it as the day that I you probably like, passed away. It's very, know, it's very though. classic looking. Yeah. No, I feel like the Mercur. I mean, that's styled after a Hoffritz. I mean, it's a, it has that big chunky bottom. It's balanced a little differently, and well, it does Hoff- have that 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 three piece feel to it, which has well, the, the, the slider no coming longer. out like a single ring. Well, the Hoffritz is no longer manufactured because that's pretty damn ugly too. I'm sure it shaves fantastic. But that's pretty <laughs> ugly too. Well, that hey, some people like chrome and some people I, like you know. I think it's just and... English style versus German style. You either like yeah. a Jaguar yeah, or you like a Mercedes. You know, it's just different. Yeah, the 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 thirty four C looks a little bit more utilitarian. Yeah. To me. Okay. Yeah, I can see it, that. It's yeah. it's like and it the thirty four C HD, so it's it's like oh, yeah. the heavy duty version. Yeah. You know, it's, right. it's not as finessed, but the the DE89, the Mula R89, which uh, Sly was mentioning, that are very, very similar. Um, they, they are they are just a little bit more finessed yeah. in, in appearance. You know? uh, that, another, yeah, another tidbit. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no. I was just saying, I think it's actually a significant difference in terms of the finesse they put in. I think the fit and finish, I think it's a noticeable difference than, than the Merkers. That's just my opinion. Again, the Merkers work fantastic. They, they do what exactly yeah, they're doing. They work great. Do. But in terms of the fit and finish, I don't. I, I think they're in two different uh, two different uh, classes. Okay. Mm-hmm. I was just going to mention that another kind of tip that I picked up from Neil. Um, I I always wondered the connection between Mula and and Edwin Jagger because they're very similar. And apparently, mm-hmm. uh, the owners of Mula, there's two brothers. Um, I guess the guy who's in charge, his name's Christy Christy Mula. He and uh, and Neil are good buddies, and they they do share in some designs and some uh, resources when it comes to manufacturing to make it a little more um, cost effective, I guess. But they do have kind of their own distinct styles and their own packaging, their own branding and stuff. But yeah, there there is a there is a pretty strong connection. They're, they're very friendly, those two companies. So just if everyone ever, ever wondered that, you know? Yeah. I have actually wondered that, like why? Because I mean, they even share the same number in the name. Yeah, yeah it's the, the, the eighty-nine, funny. you know. Huh. That's yeah. That cool story, actually. Yeah. You know. Hmm. It was funny. It, we, we were in Vegas, 
and we walked through uh, what is it, the Venetian, and and Neil saw the Art of Shaving store, and he like scowled. He's like, and I was like, what? And he's like, they ripped off my design. Like, and and I asked him, I was like, man, how does it feel that you designed this DE eighty nine, you know, you know, twenty five years ago, whatever, and everyone's ripping it off and he's like well it, it means i did something pretty good i guess yeah <laughs> yeah that's not incorrect yeah, that's true incorrect. you know it, it's the what is that the um oh gosh no. that uh, imitation is the sincere yeah. most sincere form of flattery absolutely mm -hmm. yeah you know and, and he's got a great product i mean it, that i actually started with the mula r89 but uh you know Essentially the same razor, right? And uh, great shaver. That's what I learned with. Cool. Know? So. Nice. Yeah, but they're all awesome. metal, aren't they? That's why we like vintage Gillettes. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> it's true. Now, so I, I'm planning on bringing my. I've got a 1960 Fat Boy that I'm going to bring and have you guys tune up for me because cool. I mean, not. It's it's in good shape, but I'd love to have it look a little shinier. That's fine. Yeah. We can do that. <laughs> But uh, awesome. Well, so it, if we have any questions from the from the gallery over here, then uh, we'd love to take them on. Uh, we're about halfway through our show, unfortunately. All right. Uh, Trivia so. question. Oh. Where's the lighting? Though? Anyone hmm. know what this is? A box. <laughs> so yep. It's a tuck away, isn't it? Oh, no. I've seen one of those. I don't know what it's called, but I actually seen one actually quite recently at, at a flea market, and I didn't get it because it looked like goofy and weird. You're a that fool. looks like my perfect travel razor. This is the perfect travel razor. You hit the head, uh, nail on the head. Um, I just wanted to give everyone a sneak peek. I just used this uh, last night in preparation for a video we're shooting on Monday all about chick injectors. And this is the grandfather of all the injectors. It's called the Schick Repeating Razor. And it's pretty cool. You actually load it uh, kind of like a, a, a semi-automatic rifle where you have this little lever here. And as you do this. Oh, on, no wait. way. Hold That's on. cool. There that you go. Ready? is so cool. Oh. Schick Looks like it's kind of malfunctioning, funny enough. But uh, <laughs> it, it actually puts a blade onto the uh the guard there and ejects the old one yeah it that's as so I, cool as i just did it it looks like it loaded a second blade underneath the other one almost like a, a mock uh sensor excel or something there's, hey. there's two blades there but yeah these are pretty cool razors uh and uh you know we're gonna do a whole video kind of telling people how they work and uh how cool they are to use so just wanted to give everyone kind of a sneak peek of, of monday's video and by chance so it's the razor and the blade key in one that's cool. That's right. And do you have a few of those in stock possibly available on your uh, yeah. website? We just got a bunch of, uh, of new stuff in. Yep. And there's some repeaters. Absolutely. Well, they're not listed yet because I had to pull them aside so we could show all of the different. For once in Razor Informed History, we have every single model, A through M. I think yeah, they're given different letters. So they're not all listed because I had to keep some for Monday. But Let's try this one more time. Hold on. Be. Let's see if I can get this to work. There we go. It's loading on. Ready? Boom. Yeah, you and then see you, it. you turn to 90 degrees and actually use it. And it's pretty cool. You can uh, you can put the basically the blades are stored down here in the handle in a little magazine clip. And then you just load this in. It's like a it's like a clip. Basically, Colonel Jacob Schick was in World War One and loved the semi-automatic rifle. Mm -hmm. So rifle, he made. Yeah. He came back from World War One and made this in 1926. That That's is really so cool. cool. And, how, and what kind of blades do you purchase to be able to reload that clip, or how does that? How can you continue? You basically to use that? you basically buy regular old injector blades and you take them out of their dispenser and you load them in that clip. So that uh -huh. this razor predates the injector because after this they went to the style where you put the key in and then put it across, mm -hmm. whereas with the early repeaters it's integrated into the handle. I like that. That's, that's, a, that's, cool. a, that's a really cool one. Yeah, it, and uh, Christian Levesque just asked this question that I was thinking about it. You know, 
I wonder if TSA scans would see the razor and see that it's it's actually Did a razor. Did you get pulled out for one? I took this to Miami International Airport uh, years ago, and they did not. They were like, they looked at it, they're like, what the hell is this? I'm like, oh, it's just some antique thing, and I didn't have the blade on it. And mm -hmm. they, they did not see. They're like, oh, okay, it's weird. I mean, I'm not suggesting you do that, but I didn't get <laughs> you. You would be fine as long as the cutting edge is not larger than three inches. That's like, true. You, you're fine. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You have to have a little bit of finesse and some sense of humor when you're going through and say, "No, this is this is a vintage razor," and then convert them into wet shaving and yeah. send them our way. And <laughs> I always just tell people, I'm like, oh, it's just some antique metal junk. It's just, it's just junk I found in a junk store. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I've, I've been considering that. Like, so for my next trip, I have to, I have to have everything in a carry on. I can't check a bag. Right. Whereas my last one, I, I was able to check. Um, so I could bring whatever I wanted to on my last trip, but uh, I'm going to have to arrange it so that I can bring something along with me in my carry on. And uh, not have TSA pull me over. <laughs> That'd be good. Uh, there are two questions on the right-hand side I want to quickly answer. Uh, we have James Salazar. He asked, do you plan on a stainless steel razor? Uh, I assume he means manufacturing, not just simply retailing. Um, yeah, it's no secret. A lot of people that know me, I've been up to some different uh, prototyping of our own line of safety razors that will be designed with... Um, kind of Gillette's inspiration in mind in terms of function and form. Uh, we'll also be grabbing from some other razor makers over the years, but we have been working behind the scenes on a, on a line of our own products. Um, so keep posted. We, we hope to release one within the next couple months, actually. It's been in progress for 18 months uh, in development. So uh, pretty exciting. But uh, Showing some interest in, uh, in jumping in here. Sure. This is fun. What same. a great way to like meet. I mean, the same thing that Shave West does. Yeah. Is, this is it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you take a chance, version. you start a conversation with somebody, and you're like, you know what? <laughs> you, just, you just never know what direction that shit's going to take. And that's the direction. You guys you normally take. have random people join. Is that is that normal? No. We usually have people that have come over on the side and are talking to us. But uh, okay. They said we have it's like 40 one... a.m. here in Denmark. So you probably yeah. had a couple. It's we almost have, 1 a.m. Like, uh, one show a month where we allow people to come on. <laughs> but it's usually She's like people we know. Yeah. Yeah. And my mother has some fat ass hairy Tarzan legs. Wow. Yeah. And Sly that said, be, well, she is from Europe. So that must be horrible well, to look at. Jesus from... Christ. You need to have a drink yourself, sir. So moving right along, yeah, uh, what's the next good. topic of conversation? Big Let's shape. see. Big shave, Wes. Yep. Let's. Uh... I can't wait for all these personalities. I have to go through all this footage in this Dropbox, and I'm just gonna sit there, you know, late at night watching all of this, being like, I mean, how many people are actually watching this show right now? I can't tell. I don't yeah, know. What's, how the, what's the views right now on our on our show Let's today? Sixty three. Right now, sixty three people that are that have come in, and uh, let's see, and twenty six people that are actually watching live right now. Cool. So. Let's see. Well, I hope everybody that's watching right now is going to document their experience at Big Shave West and all of these interesting comments can make their way into our video. Yeah, we will uh, be posting up um, a domain. In fact, I think uh, we set it up today. Let me grab my, oh, sorry, my phone. Um, let's take a look what the domain is. It is uh, BigShaveWestFootage.com. So that's the domain name that if you guys are interested uh, after the event, before the event, while you're traveling, you know, we'd love to get like some airport, airport footage or rental car experiences, whatever. Send over to BigShaveWestFootage.com. That'll be the Dropbox uh, destination for you to upload a video clip. Uh, preferably try to use like a smartphone or something pretty high quality. Awesome. Man, with cell phones these days, man, as long as you're not using like the front facing camera, they get some pretty damn good quality. I was going to bring my, my full on like VCR recorder, <laughs> like, <laughs> like the 80s that you put on your shoulder and like that little, the thing. yeah, like 
<laughs> walk around with that guy. Oh, I get the joke because you vintage restoration. <laughs> yeah, we'll bring, right. we'll bring a 1981 <laughs> Panasonic, you know, <laughs> like what Marty McFly uses and, uh, in, in Back to the Future. It's my like, birth year I, camera. Yeah, the I birth year you, camera. I think you should just bring it just because you don't don't even use it. Just let, let it sit right there on your table. I, we I'd talk, be happy just like that. We talked about a camera like to put like inside of like a beach ball or like, you know how you're at a wedding and they attach a camera to like a, a bottle of fire. Let's pass it around a bottle of fireball at Big Shave West and put a GoPro on it. <laughs> that would be kind I've of I've actually never, Perfect. I've Sorry, only been to one, I've only been to one wedding. I've only been to one wedding in my lifetime and it was my parents' wedding. So I don't know what the hell you guys are talking about. Hey, we know you. What's up? <laughs> hey. Um, hey oh, what's up, lady? So, so I'm guessing uh, with time change, the show start now starts an hour earlier. Uh, yeah. yeah, we're from Arizona, no, man. I know you are too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th thanks, Leonard. I think you've actually just showed us that you don't watch our show regularly. So I no appreciate kidding. that, buddy. Thanks for your support. Hey, but it yeah, hasn't been tuned like, in for like four weeks. Yeah, I think no, three like, weeks. Come on, like, guys. Dude, it's been like two months <laughs> since we came to this time. <laughs> I'm sorry, my fault, guys. I can't <laughs> believe no one's mentioned your mustache. If you yeah. hadn't come, hey, we saw it a few weeks ago. It's it's, <laughs> it's old hat. It's beautiful, Matt. Deal with go. it. That's a, that's a fantastic mountain uh, mustache here. If if Leonard had been here on time, we wouldn't have had to deal with uh, what's his name? Harry legs. Yeah, <laughs> Harry leg mom. <laughs> wow. Yeah, thanks for joining us, Leonard. Thank you. So uh, much. Yeah, again, I'm sorry. And and yeah, Matt, I heard I was supposed to uh, make sure to mention uh, BigShaveWestFootage.com. I heard you mentioning that as I came in. That's going to be like the, the Dropbox for people to uh, put on their own kind of personal videos. And I'm sure you guys will make it an uh, awesome documentary. The one last time, you know, it was short, but it was really cool. Yeah, you know, that's another question. The video last year was seven minutes. Uh, roughly runtime. I mean, would people want to see a longer video, like 10, 15 minutes, or you for, know, that, for this a documentary? Yeah. For, the, for this particular event, I think a documentary would probably be pretty appropriate. Um, yeah. Especially for the, like, it was really cool for a promo video because I think it created a little bit more buzz for this year and made people want to come. That's what it felt for like. That just don't, yeah, for those people that just don't have the financial means to get here. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. a documentary style film would probably be a little bit more appropriate and it's really, really appreciate it. Yeah. Give okay. them the sense of what it was actually like to be there. Okay, cool. So definitely needing the, the oh, lead up over here. You could have a trailer and then have a longer version. You're right. We could do the yep. promo. So it's like that quick thing. You don't feel like you have to sign on for five, 10, 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. You can have like a one minute, two minute teaser, which is a hype for the yeah. third year, which should be a full weekend. <laughs> Damon. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Okay. I'll take that advice. That's okay, good. cool. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Great idea, Christian. Good thought. All right, let's see. I'm trying to think if we have any questions over here, but uh, anybody have? Oh, hey, I have a visitor. <laughs> Noah. Say hi, buddy. Master Chef from the U.S. Navy. Master I met Chief. Master, Master Chief. Chef. Say hi. <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to read hi. the screen. Hey, what's hi, up, buddy? man? Hi. Here. Here. You put this in your ear so you can hear. Is this your boy? You this is my boy. This is Noah. Hey, Noah. Hi, going on, Noah. Can you hear? How you doing, buddy? That's it. You can't hear it? I swear I put it in your ear. Come on. No, no, no. You don't get both of them. Just one. Can you hear? It? Can you hear them talking? <laughs> Noah, is your mommy telling you to come get daddy already? Is it time for him to sign off? Did you hear him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> video booth would be an Did mommy say it's time way. for daddy to be done? Oh, like a confessional on a, like a reality Did mommy show? say it's time for daddy to be done? We better be careful one of those confessional mm -hmm. things, though, because people come and get absolutely wasted. So True. It, it, there's right. some inappropriate stuff I mean, we want to show that, you know, we're having a good time at Big Shave West. There's going to there's yeah. gonna be an open bar kind of thing, right? A video booth, we definitely talked about putting, like, a GoPro up somewhere with, like, a time-lapse photography thing. But maybe a... Maybe a Confessing it. Yeah, a confessional booth. 
<laughs> Chief Dapper says maybe it's not the best place to have a good time. I think, I think we, not, can yeah. we can dress Douglas up like a priest. You have props to play with the whole time. That would be kind of funny, but yeah, probably not a good idea. Worth a shot. I mean, there's. Um, what do people want the video to do? I mean, I know a lot of people want it to be kind of their stand-in, a stand-in for like them not coming, but why aren't those people yeah. just coming to the event? Well, some people can't make it. Uh, like you said, financial commitments. I mean, uh, uh, sounds like an excuse. Schedules. Don't they have a cool boss that lets them go to shaving conventions? <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but not everyone's boss lets them off, or they have family, wife, you know, work. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, if, if, if the wife if, has things to shave, you should. If your wife doesn't like you wet shaving, then you need to convince her to be. Hey, hi, Noah. Hey, what's up, Noah? Oh, I've got my all daughter hell, joining me now, apparently. All hell is breaking loose over there in Scott Square over there. <laughs> They're saying hi, guys. <laughs> hi, guys. Hey. Hey, everybody. <laughs> okay. Can you guys go downstairs? <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I do know that if I was any further away, uh, you know, than Arizona being within a few hours of driving distance, I wouldn't be able to come. I mean, there would be no way that I think a lot of people could justify a flight, you know, out to a shaving event. That's right. It gets a little expensive. It's hard. You know, I go, like I was mentioned earlier, I go to a Cincinnati, Ohio uh, razor collectors meeting. Mm -hmm. It's very expensive. The only reason I can make it worthwhile is that I buy a lot of collectibles when I'm out there. Otherwise, if I was just going to visit, yeah, it would be very expensive. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. For you to go, honey. Okay. Right. <laughs> uh, Christian Levesque actually made a good little point on the side. Is that uh, one goal would to be be to show many people that are in the shaving form so we can see them. Another goal is to show the various vendors enthusiastically showcasing their product. Yep. And um, it's uh, something that that video can do is just really uh, show people that it's okay to be comfortable to be in our in our forum. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, I know a lot of people that shave the way we do, but they're not very vocal in the groups. They, they, they feel a little shy and bashful. And I think this is an opportunity to really showcase the personality of the people in the community exactly. and see how welcoming it, we'll see how welcoming it truly is. Cause it could be intimidating when you see um, some of the bigger name people Go back, uh, are very place. vocal in the groups and mm -hmm. you see a lot of the same people always talking. I think this can show people that it's okay to be part of the group and part of and okay to put your opinions on things without fear of being looked at as a weirdo. I think that that's a really important yeah. point, and especially with me because I am an outsider in this masculine dominated world of wet shaving, and I'm you know one of there are some girls out there, but I'm one of the few girls, and I I don't feel 100% comfortable all the time to kind of put stuff out there, and when I do, I'm like, ah, eh, did we really care? You know, I'm not really sure, but that's one of the things that Douglas said this year that he would love to see. Last year, it was this big idea. What is Big Shave West? What is wet shaving? Why do people mm -hmm. do it? But this year, it's like, who are these people? Kind of bringing it down to earth. Exactly. Yeah. And and doing it as, as efficiently as we can, because there are going to be so many awesome personalities there. Mm -hmm. You know, who do we... Who do we talk to when we're talking on these forums and when we're buying from places like when people buy from Matt and I, we know your names, we know, mm -hmm. we know your addresses, we know who you are and we want people to know us. We too. know where you live. <laughs> we know where you live. Exactly. And we want people, we want to showcase all of the personalities of the wet shaving world. You know, so sharp David. We will talk to you this year and your wife can be the one <laughs> sitting next to you. But really that's what everybody is here. It's the personality and you're a lurker until you also become a personality because you've put yourself out there. So I think that's one thing that we're definitely going to be pushing for this year is explain the personalities and, and people's backgrounds. Right. What got you into one of these little squares? You know, like hey, I, 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 will, I will give you some credit though. You got an excellent shot of me kissing Khan in the head. <laughs> I did. I loved that one. Yeah, that, that, that was, that was, <laughs> Pretty, pretty cool and yeah and in terms of you making videos and you get involved in the community um it's very supportive like even though it is a male dominated uh a male driven hobby and even the groups are very male dominated 
my my wife has done videos on my YouTube channel, mm -hmm. and she's she's gotten a bunch. She's more enter from entertaining people. than David is. <laughs> I think I think uh, men well, love obviously. hearing from women. You know, I think they love learning from women too. I mean, you think mo a lot of customer service jobs where people have to call in and ask technical questions or billing questions. They talk to you know ladies, and uh, once people get rid of this notion that they can't talk to a woman about shaving. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's a lot to learn. I think women are very articulate with how they explain things. They're very um, detail orientated. And um, I think it's great. I think I, I'd love to see more women continue to join the wet shaving world and uh, you know, take, take the chance of getting into this. Yeah. Um, and, and it's one of those, uh, I totally lost my train. I thought I totally had a brain fart right now. Wow. That, that was uh, pretty amazing right now. <laughs> Just repeat uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> hey out of curiosity I, I don't know if uh, I think David asked this question earlier but I don't remember it hearing or hearing it get answered with the blades for that repeater mm -hmm. where do you where do you get those out like loose not in a in a key you ha you can't you have you to buy them as an injector uh, you know key injector cartridge okay. and you just take each blade out individually and you load it into this clip so just get the key and just click 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 yeah just keep the, on keep on clip. dispensing them and then it's as easy as just literally dropping them into here just putting okay. them inside and that's now going to go and slide in okay oh i remember what i was going to say now <laughs> i'm glad you to repeat it no, it, it, it's one of those situations in terms of women getting involved in the groups and stuff sure. i know a lot of the men have the issue that their wives are just not interested in hearing anything about the shaving, which I always find. <laughs> My wife gets sick of it. <laughs> Why? No, what I, find, I always find interesting because women love women make these places like the body shop very famous because of their lotions that smell a certain way. And one way that my wife is able to explain and be a testament to and the way I got her really involved in, into hearing about it is taking her with me and letting her experience the scents and smells and picking fragrances that oh, I know yeah. she enjoys that I wear. Yep. And mm -hmm. especially me, I'm, I'm beneficial living in Southern California that I have so many storefronts mm -hmm. that she goes with me and she helps me pick out soaps and aftershaves oh, and yeah. matches yep. stuff that she enjoys the smell on me. Right. And I think seeing a woman convey that message helps people and they enjoy seeing that. Like, all right, maybe I could take this plan of attack in order to get my wife to at least tolerate it. Maybe not love it like my well, family every does. Every single guy that comes to our lobby oh. says, oh, I can't spend any more, my wife. Oh, I can't, you know. And yeah, it's like, but how many guys come in our lobby who bring their wives or girlfriends with them? Yeah, and they say, okay, well, these are the brands I like. Pick any scent that you want. And it's like, oh, great. And the woman gets to sit there and we chat and she's like, oh, I don't like that. What is that? Like, is this? And then we have such a great time, but it doesn't mean a girl has to change her razor. Right. Cartridges work for a lot of women. Our hair yep. is not as coarse. You don't need something that is as efficient and as slick as something like a DE. But yep. it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be using a brush to exfoliate your legs. Yeah. doesn't yep. mean that you can't have organic and healthy materials creating a lather and a cushion. And honestly, I've shaved my boyfriend's face. I have. It was terrifying. And I was way more comfortable with a straight on my own. But I was like, okay, uh, you do your neck. Adam's yeah, your apple. Adam's apple. But I did everything else. And it was such a bonding experience. Yeah, I, I, I think that's really uh, a good statement by Marissa. I think that. You know, when women uh, are you don't looking have to go all the way, you can just do no, one the, and, and two. The brush and the soap, I think, is such an easy convert. If yep. people don't want to do the razor thing, just give them the brush and the soap to try out, and that's usually what they end up loving. The, mm -hmm. the process of making lather and how it feels, you know. That's how I actually got my like I I got my wife interested in. She doesn't do straight like the she doesn't do straight razors or safety razors yet, but she loves doing the soap and the brush, just because it's it feels great. It's relaxing, and she can have a much wider variety of scents to choose from than she has with using the canned goo or, or just lotion, you know. And so it, and a lot it's, of women experience itching on your legs after you've done you've gotten done shaving, and mm -hmm. a lot of that can be you're not exfoliating properly. You're now yep. pushing past particles down into your pores on your legs, and a soap and brush is exactly what you need to change that. You don't necessarily need to have a 34C or an Edwin Jagger, even though they do have yep. those ones with the purple handles, <laughs> yep. like the blue handles. Yep. Yeah. 
but you don't really necessarily need that. Right. right. How many how many guys have just improved their lives and their their quality of life because they don't have to worry about ingrown hairs because they're pulling it out with a brush. A brush right. is the most important part of your shaving routine. And I tell that to everybody that comes in our lobby. Absolutely. It's important to switch to a DE, but the brush is really what does it. I would never have thought that, but it makes sense. I mean, you're turning over sense. skin cells every single day. And if you're not exfoliating those properly, you're only pushing them farther down. You're not actually getting close enough to your normal fresh skin to even create a nice clean cut. And the right. The two blades this can be a problem, but not with women that have a lot finer hair that we're dealing with on our legs. True, it's very true. Hey, just, hey, just to touch on a, on something kind of unrelated, um, California Omar posted on the side that he was at West Coast shaving and they didn't know about the Big Shave West. Um, it, as far as West Coast shaving, they're not very in, involved in like the Facebook group. They just Instagram, got Instagram, Twitter, they just got and sold? G Plus. Yeah, West Coast shaving yeah. just got sold. Yeah. Yeah, that's something that uh, Douglas was saying the other day. But I guess Omar was there, and he said that they had no idea about the Big Shave West. And I was just explaining the reason. If you're not involved in social media, I know the, uh, I know West Coast Shaving, at least the previous owners, mm -hmm. were involved in some like the online forum, something like a straight razor, like a straight razor place and stuff like that. But in terms of social media, if you're not involved in social media, the odds are you're not going to know about these events that go on because right. it's a much more social media and a more personal, dr personal driven type of event, just like the meetups across the country. Those are more driven by social media. So if they're not involved in it, they're really gonna, not going to know about it. Right. Absolutely. Well, on, on that note, um, I think it's time for us to wind down, actually. Uh, our, our time is up, unfortunately. But uh, we love – I love these discussions. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun, and hopefully they're beneficial for everybody. And thank you to our, our, our guests this week. Uh, Matt and Marissa from uh, they're at least below me. I don't know where they are on your screen, but they're <laughs> below me on my screen. Uh, I see them below you. Uh, five, below man. you. Boom. Boom. Yeah. Hey, um, did anybody else notice that we all got to talk a lot more now that Douglas wasn't on the show? Today? I know, right? <laughs> we, uh, I we wouldn't say that he's going to watch the recording. Isn't he at like ACDC or something right now? I is it no Guns and Roses. Roses. Guns, Guns and Roses in Vegas. Vegas. Yep. Hey, him and uh, Tim Blem are there so hey big ups to those guys enjoy man they're gonna see if they can sneak on the bus and be be uh roadies um <laughs> so yeah anyway uh thanks to matt and marissa from razor emporium from for uh joining us on the, our discussion today and uh thanks for leonard uh joining us and and filling the, our our empty seat and keeping weirdos off of sorry ourselves. guys <laughs> <laughs> look like i'm looking at him yeah. It's all good. Big Shave West in two weeks, people. Two weeks. Woo! Two weeks, guys. Be there. It's going to be awesome. Third, baby. I've it is going to be so much night. fun. I'm so excited. <laughs> so, anyway, thanks, uh, David Gonzalez, The Truth. Check him out on uh, SoSharpLimited.com. Other way. Other, way. Oh, other, other way. way. I'm on your other side. There we go. This way. There you go. This way. This way. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, Leonard, where can people find you? Uh, Shavingindthedesert.com. Shavingindthedesert.com. Okay. Matt and Marissa, where can people find you? RazorEmporium.com. Okay. David? Hey, you guys can find me at SoSharpLimited.com. And just a heads up, we do have our our new soap and aftershave combo uh, collaboration that came out with Tiki Bar Soaps, um, the lifestyle. Also, we're going to have, for those, for those of you that are straight razor shavers, a lot of demand for them. So I'm bringing back some of the designs that awesome. feature straight razors on them. So uh, keep an eye out on the website, sociallimited.com, and those will be out sometime in the next week or so. Great. And uh, I'm your temporary host today, Scott Ostermiller. You can find me on thecleanshaver.com. I think uh, you did a great job. Great job, Scott. Good Thanks, job. guys. <laughs> no more Douglas, baby. No, no more Douglas. Douglas. Let's, let's keep him <laughs> off the show now. <laughs> Anyway, everybody, uh, have a great rest of your weekend. We'll uh, we'll see you in two weeks at the Big Shave West. All right, guys, have a good Peace one. Thanks so much. We'll see you.